What's going on guys? This is George, aka Aqua Balls for aquarium and ball pythons. He's got the snake, he's got the fish, he's got saltwater fish, he's got freshwater fish, he's got reptiles. We are here in California and he has been the best host I could ever ask for. Hello George. Hello. We're gonna check out your fish room, your Good fish second. garage. So let's take a look here in Alright, so we gotta give you a sneak preview of what we're about to see here now he's got all sorts of beautiful biotope tanks like this one here he's got planted aquascape tanks uh different spawn out tanks with mops and s designs for that as well as just beautiful tanks to look at with community fish mixed in with bettas and then what he'll do in these big community tanks some of them over a hundred gallons is he'll grab the fish that he wants to spawn out of there he'll put them in their separate system and then he'll add them back to the community so he's got all these fish many many more than you'd be able to have in species only tanks but he's also breeding baby maha chiensis wild bettas like you'll see here all sorts of different killifish all sorts of different epistogramma uh, and even uh, killifish like blue galaris varieties that are man-made uh, two pleco varieties that are wild all of it uh, he'll show us how he's using his grow out system and uh, his bread and butter fish like the tetras and angels he spawns for local stores and this incredible beta tank and he has an absolutely incredible fish room in here where you can just come and enjoy all his tanks and all of these fish basically just about every fish he has he's also spawning that's what makes george so incredible is he is a master fish breeder there are baby fry absolutely everywhere in this fish room there are beautiful fish in planted tanks absolutely everywhere in this fish room and George is not like a lot of fish people where he's cranking them out for money just for profit he is doing it because he loves it and this is emotionally spiritually you know logically whatever you want however you want to say it this is like what your happy place for my mental health You're for your mental health yeah and just like all of us, you know, um, he's got a lot going on in his life, and this is his his retreat. And like right here, he's got you know dates written on when when babies have hatched. And these are are these killies? Notobranchius darhamaikoi. Okay, so this is a notobranchius, and these are the blue and red yes. beautiful fish. I'll put a picture on, guys. But these grow up to be absolutely beautiful. Uh, these are West African? I believe so. Yeah. And then, what are these killifish? Those are here? another killifish called Aphosinium volcanum. These are the Aphosinium volcanums. Okay. And they, you can start to see, these are still young. They're growing out still. But you can see the reds and the spotting colors on them. And his tanks are very much nature aquascapes with a little bit of extra filtration and, and uh, a little bit of extra aquascaping flair to them. But they look absolutely beautiful. It's not overrun with snails or mulm or algae to the point you can't see ever. His tanks are all very, very easy to look at, easy on the eyes to count the fish. He's got all these shellies here in this tank. So let's go through and let's look at some of these incredible fish. We'll talk with George and he doesn't just do fish, he also does these terrariums too that are very cool. He just takes bowls and clips them together and makes these incredible little habitats where in theory you could put little uh, you know, pill bugs or, or something like that in there. You could, you could put little isopods and springtails in there. Very cool. And so let's, we'll start off with some of the community tanks then, yeah? So this is actually uh, my Project Piaba tank. Project I, Piaba tank. I, the checkerboard cichlid, I did breed them. Yeah. And I had cardinal tetras in there. I did breed some of them in there. And these are from Project Piaba too? Yes. So yeah. this whole tank is a, a black water biotope kind of thing, but the plants are extra. They're not from the actual sure. biotope. They're a so little I, bit of I, extra flair. Yeah. 
And then you've got the checkerboard cichlids, which are so healthy and happy. Look at the color when they have it's tannins. The tannins in the water, though. Some people think they're just black and white, but they have these subtle golds and yellows, and their eyes are very expressive. They're very cool fish. And, you know, if you don't know what Project Piaba is, check it out. Project P-I-A-B-A. -A. They are trying to bring fair prices, just like fair trade, trade coffee uh, would be, to the people who go out and catch in the Amazon, the indigenous people that are piabaeros, that go out on uh, wooden dugout canoes, and they catch these fish by the thousands. Now, they only get $4 a kilo for these fish in neon tetras when they sell them to the European and American traders down there. And these are very impoverished communities in many cases uh, that you know rely on food aid, or they have to live off the jungle and the jungle's now being destroyed. So it's a way of life that's very on the edge right now and it could go either way. And so Project Piaba is working with them to get fair prices and you may pay a little bit more for your fish, but it's why, uh, you know, this is why. And they're also better quality. They go through a lot less hardships in shipping and a lot less medication and things like that. So what do we have here? These are beautiful killifish. These are another kind of I'm Java fern. Yeah, Java fern. And this killifish I got from Redfish Bluefish Jason himself. Jason, yeah. It's called two striped killifish, also known as Aphosimian bivitatium fungi. Wow, Aphosimian bivitatium fungi or fungi. Um, very interesting and then so is this a female here and that's the male yes so yeah. the females are striped like very like cool the females are still very pretty and I they mean, breed all the time this is a uh, soft water soft water also the tank on top of yeah Piaba also is a soft water which is out of the eye and, and you keep it very oxygenated it looks like some some flow to it yes and I do do like the top tank I do take the mom off of it yeah and okay always leave the mom in there so you don't let it get overpopulated yeah, with last mom. time you before you came I did a water change about two days ago okay and I did half water change on this the pH was 4.0 I did a water wow, change. Wow, 4.0 pH. Yeah, because uh, some of my frog bits were dying. I yes, didn't want the too low for to some get plants. high. Yes. It will kill my fish. I think that's why I lost my male. It did go up a little bit. Got it. So I kind of learned did a few tricks on that. Very cool. Duckweed also kills your fish if you let it go white. If you, if you let it completely blot out the oxygen exchange and everything. Now, so he's got these in here, but he's also got black quarries. Are these the Schultzai or are these the, um, the, uh, Schultzai, I okay. Or I wasn't sure if they were the Venezuelan ones or the Schultzai ones. So or, I have four in here. Uh -huh. I have six over there. These are older a little bit. Yeah. And later on, I'm going to mix them so I can breed them together. Very cool. So it's just kind of like a dark fish tank. I mean, look how dark these fish look. And if you look at them though, they're not black. They're blue with yellow. I mean, they're a really beautiful fish. Um, yeah, really uh, cool. Sometimes and they look really good. They flare at each other. They, the they flare and their and fins they are big. they don't bite. You can see there's no fin nipping going on. As long as you give them, I think, like, few females to... Yeah. The, from day one, I didn't see any fighting going on. Wow. And I do change the water here. And you just got two females and three males in there right now? Four black corridors. That's it. Nothing else. Wow. Okay. Very cool. And then down here, you've got a beautiful aquascape. And you got this one is Altum Nature Tank. Okay. I, I wanted to make something looks like I sit here and I look at this side. Yeah. Of the where my frogs are. You've got your little. <laughs> I want better. something eye appealing so I can enjoy that. Yes. Better is one of my I bought recently. I like them a lot. So very cool. Half moon or some kind of pretty better. Very pretty. Very pretty. Yeah. The albino uh, neon tetras. Yeah. There. Yeah. The albinos are very pretty. The albino tetras. Now these are a tetra that is kept. Uh, that was created by human line breeding, but they could happen in the wild. It's just they'd probably get eaten very quickly. Yeah. But again, he's got you know a sand substrate. He doesn't do. He's not doing a deep substrate or 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 you know some people will call that father fish or Wallstead method. But yet he's still got a very natural tank, a very aquascape style tank. You can see he's actually got aquascaping soil up above here and in the back terraced so that the plants can grow in it so that's what he's got going on without having too high a light he's got the Ty taiwan nymphoides and the um 
the Matten Grossen, and uh, it looks like some Rotalas, some Sag, uh, and some maybe uh, the Hygrophila, also some Crips, some Suswasertang, and then the Dragonstone look with pieces of it down below, a little bit of hair grass. The far end plant, that one's pearl weed. Pearl weed. There's some uh, S weapons in there. Yeah. Styro, uh, Styrogen two weapon. different kinds of crypt. That one, yeah. I forgot the name, but this Lutea. one is my favorite. It's called uh, Crypt uh, with the B, I think. It's the short crypt, the small one. It's, it's not Parva, is Parva. it? It's okay, Parva. Parva. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Parva. Very cool. That tank just looks very nice, very peaceful. It's spinning, yes. Yeah. And very slow water. Yeah. So how much? How often do you do water changes? Once a week. Uh, Five gallon. This is a twenty gallon. So a quart, twenty five percent once a week. Yes. Very cool. And then if we come over here, you've got a big old community tank. This is my biggest tank right now. I left. <laughs> Enjoying it a lot. Uh, I put almost all the fish in here that I will not breed, and later on I can get them out and breed them again. So you actually have a betta in here. <laughs> so there is a betta. And it's alive. It's been there for a while, long time, like over three months. He's keeping up with everybody. And you've got peacock uh, gudgeons. There's a pair of peacock gudgeons. There's cool. one. Uh, I bred those, but I didn't focus on them. They were so easy to breed. That is a Tanganyikan. Uh, what is it called? Mm. Rock dweller. Yeah. They call them daffodils. Daffodils. Yeah. And uh, I bred these babies right here. They call them zebra acaras. Yep. They are Aracora acara. Those are very pretty. The they, zebra acaras. Also, I have uh, three different kinds. Of, four different kind of uh, rainbow. One's a Bosmanai, the yeah. other one's from uh, uh, Rabawuru. Yeah. And there's uh, Gary Langai. The there's Gary like Langai here. Four. And then with also the there's a few turquoise. There's just a few Some small little ones. Some yeah. little young turquoise. So these big ones, though, what, what, what was the name you said these again? These ones are Melatinomium uh, Ubusturata from Rabawuru. Okay, Melatinia Ubusturatum from Rabawuru. 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 Yeah. So I really like this fish a lot because yeah. I call this are my uh, like a flaming ca Camaro. Yeah. Like they're super. That red uh, on them. Very appealing on for me. So in the morning and at night, I bet they color up really intensely. Yeah, huh? See, this is most colors you see with the red. Oh on yeah, them. the red and the metallic and the glistening. Wow, that, yeah, that is special. And then you've got all sorts of different plecos in we here. We have a Colombian uh, zebra plecos. Those yeah. are like uh, the yeah. cheaper kind. We yeah. got one hill stream loach. I have yeah. a breeding pair of bushinos. They always breed in here. Wow. That's how I get all my bushinos. They're a large one, just pair. Rainbow shark. And there is. Uh, and you've got lots of caves. Kobotai uh, in there. One. Yeah. Uh, that one eats all my snails. If I have extra snail, I'll throw in here. He'll eat so them. So you're a Kuba Thai loach. It's in there somewhere. I think I saw him swimming Let me back feed there. The tank. Let sure, me yeah, go. feed the tank. We're gonna get a feeding time, guys. Uh, and then he's got some Siamese algae eaters. Your favorite. Food. Oh, tetracolor granules. That's what Lucas Bretz is always about. Look at the size of these rummy nose. They are huge. And same with these. Are these espies or lamb chop? Or Harlequin. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, those are uh, the, I, the I honestly French, right? Those ones, the flying foxes, they call them. Oh no, no, I was talking about the the rasboras. Oh, those are Harlequin rasboras. Okay, I can never keep the SP, the lamb chop, and the Harlequins. Like technically, there's the difference. So I don't with a 150 gallon tank with all this Harlequin there, all the yeah. Uh, that is a Kubatai. Oh yeah, there's the Kubatai loach. So he eats all the snails, huh? Yes, and the, the female, uh, that's the male, what's his name? Oh yeah, bushy, the bushy nose right and sisters. There's the female there. He, might, he might be guarding he eggs. He might even have eggs, yeah. Let me yeah. Check you. Uh, those ancestors have so many babies. And again, look at these rainbow fish coloring up as you feed them. That is the magic of rainbow fish, especially when you give them the proper tank. You know, a big 180 tank 120 tank whatever it may be that they need you know for the species it makes such a difference and he also feeds them very good quality foods yeah, he's right. always hatching brine shrimp there too eggs there's there. eggs in here yeah, i see <laughs> eggs in there actually. oh yeah uh, on top yep i see them too i don't know if the camera will focus back in there but yeah you can see he's guarding the eggs so actually i leave them in there until yeah. the babies develop the until they start they to develop, come out i'll take it and put them in a 40 gallon that's that's what i do too yeah only the babies not the father i'll leave the father and mom in there so they can breed again very cool and so yeah this tank is just very nice with the open space the crinum the crypts and then 
as we continue around, he's got tanks with just, you know, guppies. He's got tanks with uh, other strains. He's always working on little things, projects like that. He's also got so many different killifish. So we'll have George tell us about the killifish. But I just had to show you guys. He's also always uh, hatching brine shrimp, baby brine shrimp. He's got running each and every day. And in here, he's George seems to specialize both in killifish, in apistos, and uh, I got you got quite a few rainbows and I, angels too. I have some guppies. I just guppies too. Yes, yeah, uh, also. yeah, up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a uh, that's actually from Jason also redfish. Blue oh, fish. It's the Hawaiian Moscow oh. Oh. guppy is my favorite. So then in here we've got a whole bunch of bettas. He's also George also keeps many bettas. Betta these are the Mahachiensis. I have these as well. I have a group of these as well in my house because they bred for me as well. They're very. Uh, I found them very easy to breed compared to a lot of bettas. Uh, but they're very pretty wild betta. And then what are these? Are these Australis or Aphosimian orange? Okay, so these are Aphosimian Australis orange. Beautiful killifish. This plant, by the way, everyone's going to ask. They always do. Uh, this is uh, Cryptosporalis uh, tiger. red tiger or t yeah or also, tiger. that other plant that looks like grass. Yeah. that was as red as that. Crap. And moving next door, I see a little a little betta in there. So he's. A betta and then the, another killifish is hanging out somewhere in here. And then here we've got a, is this a McMasteri? Actually that one. Or, uh, the re so this was a Rio Momoi uh, and then Agazizia. Something wrong with his mouth. The boy. Yeah, he's got some sort of little like growth on his mouth, maybe a tumor. I haven't bred him yet, but the females in the back where the hole is, she could yeah. have five. If she does, I'm going to be very happy. I will take them out, out of there. Yeah, I mean, she might. She I could. So. She's kind of guarding yes, it. Yes, I see that. That's and my... there are some dither fish that he's keeping in there. Some little tetras, neon tetras. Blue neon tetras. And then if you come over here, we've got another apisto. These ones are very pretty. Elizabethi. These are Elizabethi. Elizabeth Bethi. Uh, and these are uh, the another apisto, but they're the red variety. Let's see if we. Yeah, here we go. Elizabethi. Elizabethi, Elizabetha. Very pretty fish. Yeah, they are very with the blue and the the red. And then again here, oh down here is the so next I have the what you call it here. This apisto is called Yeah. So Abacaxis. And there's yeah. fry also in here. Oh fry, wow. With the mother guarding them. You can see one. So the mother is guarding the fry in here behind that pot. And he's gonna come over here with the light in a sec. But these, when they spawn and color up, are really, really something special. And uh, there's a fry right there. Oh yeah, there's a little fry right there. There's living about fifteen fry in there. I fifteen, huh? So George has absolutely an, a fish room absolutely full of little baby fish, which is quite the accomplishment. It really is. And here we got a pair of banshee. Inca 50s. Yeah, the Pisto Benchi 50s. I love these. I had these for a while. Very cool. They can be a little aggressive like the McMaster Eye, but they're... Yes, they, they kind of ate their fry last night. Yeah, the, the, mine did uh, that too. The boy did that. So there's the male there. So you have to separate the male out there. Yeah, and then what this do we have This is my here? favorite, one of my favorite, Trifasciata. A Pistogramma Trifasciata. Trifasciata. Very nice. So the, here's the Trifasciata male. And the trifasciata the female. Now, apistos, apistogramma, all turn, the females pretty much all turn yellow or some sort of yellowish banding usually uh, when they're spawning. But you can see here the male also. You've got a couple females in the male. Look at that color she there. She could have fry in that. Yeah, thing. that coconut. I was wondering. She's all colored up. These colors are. Yeah, beautiful. look at the, you the, the yellow. Fruit. That's why it's my favorite. It's kind of yeah. Like beautiful fish. Beautiful. Absolutely. And yeah, then these are I babies. Just gave the parents away to Marco. Uh, I have a lot of fry at this. Yeah, yeah. They breed like crazy with the parents. Nisenai? Nisenai. Uh, yeah. The Nisenai. That uh, one has just a trio of uh, albino full red guppies. Okay, guppies on the end. But absolutely beautiful. And then these tanks are all really pretty too with the substrate shallow substrate but with plants looks great 
and uh, you know a little bit of algae a little bit of micro biodiversity which is great some snails you're not anti snail and very very cool thank you and then up here you've got more fry more fish so CPDs some rice fish and a few uh, rainbows some platinum rice fish and that some that one is just uh, nothing in nothing there. in there it's yeah. good to have tanks waiting though you know and then in here you can see it's 82 right. it went down a little bit and down. the high was 84 yeah, yeah it's and the humidity 77 the highest right? Just 62, the high. 62 now yeah so right here I have my Aphiosimian fry, the, some of the red stratum, yeah, one of my favorite. Yeah. You can see the, uh, the adult right there. Yeah, right now. they're beautiful. So these, these little babies here belong to these ones. And we'll get them to come to the front. But you'll see in a second, these are an absolutely beautiful little killifish. What, do you, what can you tell us about these, George? So these are like, they have my favorite colors. Uh, red, yeah, blue, red, the orange, blue. little black, I mean, and look green, at that. descents on them. Incredible. That's why I really enjoy it. Look at that color on that male. And they live long life, like around three years, two and nice. a half years. They're not going to die, which is because they're killifish. The only kind of killifish lives four to six months is the notobranchus. Yeah. Which I did have a bunch and don't have anymore. I have some eggs I was going to patch so, up. So wow. Good. And then here we've got another large killifish. That's, you know, which ones are, sir. And these are beautiful. Blue Look Galaris. At, yes, these are the blue Galaris. Look at the fins on these. And these are from a European line if they're from Jason. Are they from Jason? Yes. He yeah. Sent them to me also. And so these are also probably line bred and selected a bit. So they may not look just like the wild ones, but boy are they gorgeous. They almost look like a giant rocket killifish. And that, that adult is probably a good four and a half inches long, the male. But again, the 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 red and, and blue one that we saw there is so beautiful. The babies are up there, living up in the tank doing their thing. And then we've got more guppies again. Those are just black guppies. Black guppies. With some fry. And in here we've got babies. I just stirred a tank, but uh, there is a lot of about 50 to 60. Oh, yeah. Uh, Apistogramma, McMasteri, Vieja, I think they call it. Oh, yeah. McMasteri, Vieja. So many fry. The parents are here on this side. And the parents are over in here. You can see them hiding down, down in there. They may come out. I'll get them if they come out. Over here next door, there's more Aphosinian Volcanum. And these are, again, a really pretty fish. These are young. They don't have their full color yet. That bottom one female, the one on top colorful is yeah. So yeah, the, so the stripes are female. And then like this one here. And then the ones with more color that will be coming in, those are the males. Here you can see some color. Even on the females too, they've got some more color on the older ones. Yes, yes. they don't grow any much bigger than that. Okay. And it's just the colors and the fins get a little bigger. Yeah. And when they spawn, I'm sure it's a well, little more spawn pronounced. At that size. If you put a pair in a lot of moss tank, just like we do to the rock yeah. kitty, they will spawn a lot of fry when you get them. Very and cool. The, about three generations, the fry won't eat each other until they get to the third generation. The large ones will prey on the smaller ones. Okay, and that's what you have just a ton of here. Yeah. Uh, no. It, this, oh, this tank these, these is, ones. Uh, yeah. In these ones, you this you one I collected the eggs okay. in the peat moss. They bred in the oh, peat moss. Yeah. I dried it for uh, five, so it was two months and one week. Wow, Eight, nine weeks I dried them. So you dried it in after they laid eggs in water in peat moss, and you and take it out, dry it, and then I put auto DI water and okay. also a little bit of salt water, just a tiny bit, yeah. and then about two hours, all about. 200 fry hatch. Wow. I gave about 50, 60 yesterday away in the killifish club. Yeah. And then because we, I got some yeah, yeah. betas. Uh, and these are them when they grow. Awesome. Very cool. Very cool. So then we've got another community tank of rainbows. So what do we got here? So these are uh, Melatonium Marisis. Marisis. I got them from uh, a hobbyist, which her name is Aquaria Life. Aquaria Stephanie, life, very, Stephanie, very yes. Person. Wow, look at those colors. They're just that electric. Is, oh, and there's black Venezuelan Polydora. Oh, there's the black Venezuelan quarries that are also in that other aquascape. And a big old Plico, big old snowball Mama or Pleco. spotted. Mama Pleco. What is she? Uh, it's a female, I mean a male, but they call it Mama Pleco. Oh, Mama Pleco. Finish. I love this one. 
Very interesting. Very yeah. interesting fish. Plus, it almost looks like it's got frosting on it or something. Mm, you know, like a little, little, looks almost the denticles. Yeah, look like, uh, like what's that frosted thing? golden nugget. Almost, yeah. but it's not. Yeah, very similar. And then, so what's this system set up here? You got fry going on in here. Those are my fry from this angel pair right here. Okay. I'm trying to hatch a bunch of those. Okay. My You're doing a drip, uh, yeah, like constant flow through tank mm -hmm. system with the the trays. And then down at the bottom here, what? These are uh, larger babies of my uh, Apistogramma nitsini. There's a oh lot yeah, of boy, you have a lot. Yeah, a lot. I have more of them. Wow. They won't stop breeding. Wow, Apisto. Nisini, our George's best friend. Now over here we've got little baby angels, and these are the Filipino blue. I blues. just bred, and there's neon tetra, a few, about six of uh, yeah. what you call it, um, baby placos, so they can eat the wood. And oh yeah, fungus. yeah. So I didn't get. Oh yeah, some baby placos, and some nice wood in there, some nice tannins. Cryptochron, very cool. brown when dead eye. Ah, when daddy brown. My favorite, actually. Very nice. It gives really it looks, nice texture. It looks good just with the one plant in there. You oh. know, the one species looks great. Yeah. Also, this is only sand. There is no inert soil in there. Okay. And I did put every little bit, about three to four pieces of Asma coat. Just Asma coat. With the so not root tabs, but yeah, Asma coat. Yeah, you see coat. there's one piece out over there. Sure. I just put some Asma coat. Not a whole lot. I didn't put it on the bottom and then put sand on top. This is... I just, after I planted it, took some asthma coat and I put it in there. After six months or so, if they suffer, the plants start suffering, I'll add some more asthma sure. coat. Sure. Crips can usually deal with that as long as, you know, there's a little bit of nutrients. They're such slow growers. So then we've got some more angel fish My here. avatar fry. That These I are have avatar left. fry. And then he's also got, are those shellies running around back so there? The or what one, are they? There is more uh, nissan in there. Oh, more pistos. And there's few uh, discus that are left over that I had. Wow. What an interesting combo. Looks like there might be a pleco or something in there too. Oh yeah, there is actually Bushinos. Bushinos pleco, okay. And then up here we've got a condo with some plecos. These are the L236 RB line. I also bought them. L236? The fish fam auction. From nice. The, uh, we've got more babies up here. A lot of babies down bottom. Maybe yeah, there. lots of little yeah, bristlenose plecos living on the glass. Beautiful koi angels. And over here, well, what do we have here? Are these the daffodils? These are actually Parasipochromus leptosoma blue neons. Oh, okay. Parasipochromus leptochromus? Parasipochromus leptosoma. Leptosoma, okay. Parasipochromus leptosoma blue neons. Very cool. And these are a Tanganyikan? Yes. Okay. I bred them. They're all my babies. I don't have the parents. Okay. Wow. You got a good... I mean, you got some babies now that can grow up and do their thing. I'm going to have to buy more to... Yeah, you've got them in with life. Tetras yet again. George, what yes, is your problem? You cannot have... One of my favorite fish. They yeah. also exist the same kind with yeah. albino. The yeah. albino look great too, but you got to get it from a nice place. Don't get them yeah. deformed and stuff. Yeah. You need to get a good quality. So I got one runt right there. I don't want to Sure, one, one runt. The, the stone in there is very cool too. You got serpentine and olivine and... Yeah, cool. Uh, Altenera renikia, right? Uh, yeah, Altenera renikia. Just fine in the sand only, and there's some cryptoparva. Yeah, some uh, some, some rotala there. starting. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. And then over here, we've also got gladiators. Look at the size of these beasts. My own these, snake heads. These are yeah, essentially snake heads. The size of these and the color. These are one of the largest bettas there are. And these things are beautiful, probably four or five inches long, yes, eight of them, maybe yes. six inches yeah. long. Eight of them in a 60 gallon. How do you like the background? I like it, it's just spray, spray paint. paint. Yeah, yeah, it looks good. I made it look like a sky, whatever I could do. Yeah, that's great, and the rocks are cool too. They're very cool. I collected those rock myself. Those are the, the, uh, the, desert, the, rock. the de desert rock, awesome. Very dangerous. The wood is very nice too. And, uh, now is this water black water kind of the way you're yes, chemistry for the beta so they don't get fungus and stuff yeah keep know, it acidic and keep tannins in it and then uh 
temperature wise, it's probably just I whatever the fish at, room is. Right yeah. now, it's at 82, 82. but uh, during the winter, it can go down to 72. And 70. hang off the back filters are what you're running on a lot of stuff, as well as sponge filters in some tanks. Some of them I have sump, the big tank. So, yes. I have sump, also the. Yeah. Uh, that tank down there, I have a sump on the 40 gallon. And there's sponge filters also with the sump in it. Wow. So you've got a lot of filtration in your tanks yeah. for sure. And then you've got airlines set up. My, uh, that's the Jimco pipe. The, yeah. The, it runs all my tanks with one pump and I have it all the way around. You can see the, the lights coming down. Yeah, that's great. And you can see his garage. He's in, And then he's got his feeding project which we're not going to show but of mice and rats for no mice, no mice just rats okay for his snakes so this whole garage is just full of incredible creatures that george takes care of and he's always working on something new there's lots of stuff hidden around you'll have to check out george's channel to find out more and uh george where can they check out your channel one more time so my channel called aqua balls on youtube aqua, aqua balls. balls one word yeah and it's about snakes and fish i had the snakes since 2005 i started collecting and when i quit my job in 2016 uh i went and got into the fish room because i was home all the time and very I cool right now. well thank you so much for showing us around george and for being such an incredible uh, host for me coming to LA very very cool to see your fish room there's more to see but you'll have to check it out on his channel he's always switching it up too yeah. thanks George